and welcome to Thursday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where I think I should start today's edition um, with a short story. Now, this story is about two setters who collaborated to create a new type of Sudoku. Um, so Tall Cat and Riff Clown a few weeks ago basically came up with a rule set called Lockout Lines. Now, I have never solved a lockout line puzzle to my shame, which I really should have because these have been doing the rounds now on Logic Masters Germany and on the Discord server um, in great masses. Basically, the world's constructing community has got together. They love this rule set. Um, and I, I think there's been something like a thousand solves of these puzzles already. And yeah, I, I've never done one of these until today when I hope I'll be able to do this one. So the, the testers have said that this is a brilliant introduction to lockout line rules. It's called Trickling Down and it's by Mr. Menace. And Mr. Menace makes amazing puzzles. So we should be in for an absolute treat. And I'm, I'm assured this one is not too difficult. So we're gonna learn about lockout lines together with this puzzle and hopefully we'll fall in love with them. I know Mark has fallen, fallen in love with them. And I know this because we have a special treat coming up uh, in the form of a mass of lockout line puzzles uh, for our October reward over on Patreon in just a, a week's time. Um, and basically, um, well, basically Tall Cat and Riff Clown have, have put together a sort of congregation of awesome setters and they have created a whole puzzle bundle where you have to work through them in order in order to reach a final puzzle. And let me read you some of the names of the constructors who've contributed to this because it's fairly impressive. Uh, obviously we've got Tall Cat and Riff Clown themselves, the inventors of the puzzle. We've got Grockles, Mr. Menace, of whom this puzzle is Mr. Menace's, Zetamath, Virtual, Andrew Sarkis, Memorista, Chili, Maverick JD, Two to Tenth. Many of these names will be very familiar with you if you've been following the channel for a while. And uh, you know, this is, just, this is just incredible. And Mark has been working through this puzzle pack and he says it is amazing. Now I want to have a go, so I've got to actually learn what lockout line puzzles are. So today's the day when we're going to learn it. So let me read you the rules and we'll see what's going on. So normal Sudoku will supply digits on a line must fall outside the range of their yellow endpoints. E.g., endpoints of one and eight only allow nine on the line connecting them. Okay, let me just think about that. Um, only allow nine on the line collecting them. So if we had one and eight here, what we're saying is that the digits between one and eight, and indeed one and eight themselves, are locked out from the line, I suppose. So these would all have to equal nine, and that would break the rules of Sudoku. So these are not one and eight, is I think what we're learning. Um, each endpoint value must differ by at least four from other directly connected endpoints. Right. So if this was a three, this would have to be at least seven. Let's just think about this just to make sure we understand it. If that's a three and that's a seven, you now can't put the digits, well, the digits between three and seven or three and seven themselves on the lockout line. So these digits would have to be selected from one, two, eight, and nine. Okay, that sounds, that sounds mad, but I think I do understand it. Okay, and then digits on a line may repeat if allowed by other rules. I'm just looking at this puzzle. I don't think that applies to this puzzle, does it? I think normal Sudoku rules is going to prevent that, but that must be a rule that sort of occurs in other lockout lines puzzles. So that's why it's been included so that we, we are au fait with all lockout line rules. Good grief. Okay, now, oh yes, one thing, I managed to get this picture where there are some examples of correct lockout lines and incorrect lockout lines. So let us have a look at this and see if we can understand it. Whoa, 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 this is confusing. Right, so we've got a one and an eight here in the lockout lines and two nines on the lockout line because you can't put the digits between one and eight or one and eight themselves on the lockout line so they have to both be nines and they can be repeated because of the orientation of the line that's mad okay 
2 and 8 here, so you have to put 1 and 9 on the line because they're the only available non-locked out digits. Let's have a look at the incorrect lockout lines. That may be easier to understand. So what's wrong with this? 1 and 8 here. Well, 1, yeah, this 1 is not not between, is it? It's just equal to one of the digits in its in its end point, so that's not allowed. Same here, one and nine surround two, and we should be looking for digits that... Do. So in fact, you can never put a one and a nine as the end points, because then there would be no available digits to go on the lockout line. Four and seven with a... Th that, oh, right, that's interesting. So four and seven... The reason this is wrong is that the, the endpoints have to differ by 4, and here 4 and 7 are only 3 apart. So although the 3 looks correct, because it doesn't lie between 4 and 7 and isn't 4 and 7, that's, that still doesn't work. And this doesn't work because 3 and 6 are too close together. They're only 3 apart. Right, there we go. I understand, I think. I think we should be able to do this. Do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video, as usual. Now I get to play. Let's get cracking. Um, and I can see, I can pencil mark some twos into box seven immediately. But no other digit looks like it's repeated in the grid. I do have some givens though, which is very generous of Mr. Menace. Seven givens. Um, Okay, so it looks like we've got to think about maybe this pattern at the top. <laughs> I have no feel for this tool yet, which is a worry, isn't it? So let me just, I'm just going to put some digits in just so I can, I can think about this. So if I put one here and six here. Now these three squares would have to equal seven, eight, and nine, wouldn't they? Because everything else is locked out. These have got to not be either the endpoints or numbers between the endpoints. Yeah, okay. So that is the rules. So if this was one and six, these would be seven, eight, nine. Now six would then have to go downwards again because if we went up to nine this line is impossible now because well no actually that's not true it's not it's not the line that's impossible nine is too close to six. Oh, okay yeah so it has to go downwards because you can't go upwards with enough of a gap because four difference going upwards would get to a 10 so this would have to, oh this is impossible now this can't be a one or a two. Okay, I've just chosen a bad example here. Let's do three and seven. They would work. Three and seven. Now these squares have got to be ones, twos, eights, and nines. This square now has to be low again, and it can now be low. It could be a one. But that's going to break that line again, because that line's now broken again, because... Um, the only digits that could go on the line are 8 and 9, and there are three digits. Right, okay. That's strange. So maybe a better way of thinking about this is to work out what digits are difficult to put on the line. Because in between line puzzles... The extreme digits are difficult to put on the line. Here, I think it's the middling digits that are difficult. In fact, can you... Yes. Ah, right, 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 right. Good grief, Simon. Right, five. Can you ever put five on a locked out line? Surely the answer is no. And the reason is... So now I'm going crazy. No, that I think this is right. If you put five on a locked out line, now these two digits are not allowed to surround the digit five. So, so, so what we could do is select a six and a nine, for example, except six and nine are not four apart. 
so there is no way to do it. What well, even if you pick a digit very close to five here, or very far away, you can never now fulfill this, this digit can never be such that it doesn't bound the five, because it has to be four different from nine, and once it's four different from nine, it hits, it hits five. So you can never put five on a line, and that means five in row one is in one of those cells. Five in row five is in one of these cells. And have we got a swordfish? That's the question. Five in, five in, no. Uh, I was gonna say, I was looking at row eight, but there isn't actually the same sort of structure of these lines. So this could be a total red herring. Um, I'm not very good at these, am I? I'm not quite getting my head around how these work. Five. So five is difficult to place on the line. So now, so whatever this digit is, These digits have to be four away from it in a way that I can still allow six digits onto the lockout line above it. How on earth do you do that? I feel like this has to be a 159 triple. Is that, is that a silly thought or not? If this, let me just try this. If this is a six, now now you're locked now you're locked out from putting high digits on the end of the line so these would both have to be low digits oh this is a silly example because i can't use two because of the given two let's do it the other way around if that's four now these have to be an eight nine pair but now there's nothing I can put on these lines. These lines have to be ones, twos, and threes. Ones, twos, and threes, and one nine is what I get to put on these lines, and that's not enough different digits. And that's only gonna get worse, isn't it? If I go down to three here, although I introduce the ability to put a seven into one of these squares now, I can't possibly use nine because if I use nine, it's impossible to make the lockout line work because if I put nine in, I've only got one and two as options for the thingy. So I've got to use, so these have to be a seven, eight pair. And I'm still going to run out of digits here. Let's just prove that to ourselves. It feels like it's sensible logic. This one has to be a 129 triple. And what on earth then do I put on that one? I can't put one, two, and nine on it. And the only digit, the only other digit available is eight. <laughs> so that's totally wrong. Right. So perhaps that is the way to think about it. You just can't put anything other than five in this line, in this, in the middle of this sequence, because anything else doesn't allow you to create the flexibility you need along the locked out lines in row one. Let's just prove it. I mean, obviously it's symmetrical. So if we, you know, if we put three in here, it's gonna be the same logic as if we put seven in here. Let's just prove eight doesn't work as well. So if you put eight in here, now these squares have to be selected from ones, threes, and fours, because they've got to be four away at least. Now you can't put one in because that's not gonna leave you anything apart from nine to put on the line. If you put three on, well, that means these are a three, four pair. And again, you've not got enough different digits outside of the lockout in order to put them on, put them, you need six different digits and you've only got ones, twos, nines and one three to go on the line it's just nonsense it just doesn't work so okay this is all a very long-winded way of saying this digit is a five that means those di oh aha aha 
So that means there is an X, there's not a swordfish on fives, there's an X wing on fives. That's interesting. Now, the other thing I want to think about, so these are a one nine pair now, because these have to be four different from five and they can't be the same number. So one of these is a one, one of these is a nine. So if this was one five, these squares would have to be from six, seven, eight, and nine. And if this was nine five, these would have to be from one, two, three, and four. This is a very strange rule set indeed. <laughs> now, what does that mean though? I want to use my X wing now. And what, sorry, let me just be clear what's happened with the X wing. What's happened is in row one, there's only two places for five now because of this five here. And in row five, there's only two places for five as well. And these are in the same columns of the Sudoku. So I want to ask a question. How many fives are we expecting there to be in column one? And how many fives are we expecting there to be in column nine? Now the answer is in, in a correct Sudoku, there's gonna be exactly one five in column one, and there's gonna be exactly one five in column nine. So that's two fives. But we know that there's gonna be exactly two fives in the blue squares, because we know there's either a five here and a five, oops, five here and a five here, or a five here and a five here. Because, because of what the logic in the rows. So if there are two fives in the blue squares, there can't be any more fives in the rest of column one and column nine. So all of these squares are stopped from being fives now. Um, so that means I can't put five in either of those and I can't put five in either of those. I have no idea what that means. I feel like that should mean something very profound. Um, does it or not? <laughs> does it matter that you can't put five into a between line? Not a between line, a locked out line end point. Um, That's the question. The answer to that question, I don't know if it matters. If you can't put five in, does that do something to the other middling digits? Is that the point? That's actually not a stupid, that's not a stupid thought, is it? If you put six on this line, how do you do that? You've now got to put these endpoints such that they don't bound a six. So you can't have seven, eight, or nine in these endpoints anymore, because if you do, if you put eight in, now you need a number that's four away from eight. Well, that, that's going to be something that bounds six, which is impossible. So the lockout line, yeah, and the lockout line has to be four apart. So you would need, f ah, that's the point. That's what we needed to understand. Once you can't put five, in an endpoint of a lockout line, you can't put four or six on that line. And there are, right, this is beautiful. This is beautiful. So look at row five now. If you can't put fives in any of those squares and you can't put therefore four or sixes on these lines, where are we gonna put four and six in row five? The answers are in these three squares where we also know there is a five. So this is a five or six triple out of nowhere. It, nowhere that is so there's a five not in there there's no four in here i'm tempted to ask about threes and sevens now i think that's the way you have to approach these puzzles you've got to slowly i admit it was slowly slowly i have understood that five is the most restricted digit you because you can never put it on a locked out line then there is still problems with middly digits because you can't bound the middly digit. So let's just have a think about this. If we put three on this line now, what happens? So now we can see these squares can't be ones and twos. So we're selecting from 
digits that are we can't put f ah so one of these has got to be a four doesn't it because we can't put fives into these positions this is very this is really clever stuff it's really interesting so once you try and put three on a lockout line and we will need to put three in one of those six cells because you can't use one or two in the in the endpoints because if you do let's just prove that to ourselves if you put one here this square is definitely going to bound the three which is not allowed so you've got to put a four five six seven eight or nine but whatever you're selecting has to be four apart so one of these digits has to be a four or a five and neither can be a five this one because of the five here and this one because of the x-wing so we must put a four Oh, I see, and there's a given four here. So, so depending on whether the three is on this line or this line, there is a four in one of those two squares, forced. Now let's do the same with seven. Whoa. Uh, so seven, we can't use eight and nine in the lines. So we need to use six or five, and we can't use five because of the X-wing, so you have to use six. But we don't get a given six to tell us which side the six is going to be. That's annoying. So there's a six. Well, there's a six in one of these four cells. Ah, yeah, this is, this is clever as well. This is very clever. Let's imagine the six is here. We know that uh, in fact, that's silly because the six needs to be on the same line as my seven. So let's put the six here. So there's a six here because we know that wherever the seven goes in these squares, it needs a six to bind it, to bound it. Now, if the six is here, what digit do you put in this square? And the answer is a digit that's four away from six. So it's going to be a lower digit. It's going to be a one or a two. Well, it can't be a one or a two because it's given one and two in row four. So there is no six in either of those two squares. And if there's no six in either of those two squares, the six must be in this row as well as the four. So this is a four, six pair out of apps. Oh, I've got a four, six pair here now as well. There's a four, six pair in row four because we need to bound the four and the, sorry, the three and the seven that must appear in two of those six cells and then whichever one is a four is going to have to go with ah it's going to have to go with a nine because it can't go with an eight look and we need a digit that's four away from four so one of those two squares is a nine and whichever one is the six it needs a one or a two ah bother Okay, there's a one or a two in one of these squares, and a, there's definitely a nine in one of them. That's not a two. Okay. Um, four, six pair here. We are trickling down the grid as well, aren't we? We did logic up here, and then we've done logic here. So probably in a minute, we're going to have to do some logic down here. what let me just think about this for a moment though have we actually used up as much as we can know about these these things i've got a horrible feeling i should be able to resolve which way round these go and the fact there's a nine in one of those two squares i would would quite like to pencil mark but i don't really like pencil marking across boxes unless i'm really stuck um i don't know maybe it's sudoku actually i'm just noticing look i've got a two three pair here and a five four six triple in column five so that means those three squares there have only got the options of being one sevens eights and nines yes okay this is interesting. I'm now also noticing that by Sudoku, this square can't be one, two, three, or nine, or five. So that square's only got the options of being four, 
six, seven or eight. You see, and I'm not sure whether this is a meaningful restriction on these. I have a feeling it is because if you put four in there, this one has to be an eight or a nine straight away. Although it can be, I think. Oh, this is, ah, this is only a two cell. Ah, that's weird. This is only a two cell line. But that doesn't really matter so far because the, f the rule that the endpoints have to be four apart means that if this is a four, this still has to be an eight or a nine. Oh, so maybe I'm going to get a quadruple here. Sorry, let's check this. If this is a six, yeah, that works. This has to be a one. It has to be four different and it can't be a two. If this is a seven, this has to be one, two or three and it can't be two or three. So it's still one. If this is an eight, oh, it could be a four. Oh, that's annoying. So I haven't got a quadruple. This squares looks like it might be able to be a four. If that could only be one, eight, nine, then I'd have a quadruple there. <laughs> Again, I suspect I've misunderstood something about the rules, which is very... And how on earth does this puzzle solve from here? I've got one digit on a yellow cell I've not used. Oh, good grief. I think I've made a mess of this. Three has to be in one of those three cells and therefore in one of two cells in box. Box two. Mavericks flying past, taunting me with my inability to solve locked out lines puzzles. Um, I don't think this is going to be restricted at all, is it? If that's a one, this is a three cell line. So I've got to leave enough of a gap. If this is a one, that has to be a six because we can't put five here because of the X wing. And it can't be a seven because then I'd have to put, if this is a one seven pair, this would have to just be made up of eights and nines and there are three cells. So if that's a one, that's a six. If that's a seven, this has to be a low digit and it couldn't be two or three. So it would have, oh, it would have to be one. So if that's a seven, oh, that doesn't work. Oh, that's weird. Okay. Now, in fact, I think seven is impossible, which I had not appreciated at all. If that's a seven, there's no valid digit here because if you you could put a one in because that is more than well, it's four away or more, but then these digits would have to be eights and nines. So there's just no way to make that work. If this is eight, oh, you see eight does work because you could put four in here. If that's eight, you put four in here and now you have got three digits to choose from there because you've got ones, twos, threes and nines. So if this is nine, you can't put five in here because of the X wing. You could put four in here. In fact, that's a four, six pair, if that's true. Yeah, oh, this is right. This, this cell is doing heavy lifting. If this is nine, the actual options for this square are not legion. We've hardly got any options still. You can't put five in because of the X wing. You can't put, you can put four in, sorry, but you can't put three or two in and you definitely can't put one in because then there would be simply no digits that we could put on the locked out line. So in fact, this square, I think, can only be four or six. That gives a four, six pair in the column and resolves our X wing. This square is now a five by Sudoku. That means the five in row one goes here. This square's a six. This square's a four. This square's a six. Good grief. This can't be a nine anymore. It's got to be four away. One of those two squares was a nine. I remember that. So that one must be a nine. That means this square's a four. Oh, which we could have got just by Sudoku. Look. 
that's a nine this is a one the amount of lifting this cell has done is quite extraordinary now, oh no and i've made a mistake look at that i've got two nines here what did i do wrong there oh no 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 i didn't i didn't make a mistake did i because all i did was just hypothesize what if this is a nine so i just had to remove that given digit but because it wasn't given it was a mistake um and i don't think i used the fact that there was a nine in this cell to resolve this cell because i seem to have managed to put nine into this cell so look it does look like i can remove nine from here and in fact this this locked out line is forced that needs to be a one few i think one's come out of there nine's come out of there this is a seven eight pair that means this square is a four or a nine so it's got to bounce to either if it's a four it's got to go with eight if it's a nine it's got to go with four so this square is not six or seven i don't think um yeah this is <laughs> now it's really interesting once you get a few of these lines fixed or the endpoints fixed look at these three squares now they have to be not be ones and sixes and not be between one and six so they're forced to be a seven eight nine triple i think that's a nine c's a seven eight pair that's a seven that's an eight eight must live ah we can get rid of the maybe i get rid of the blue coloring now because i think we've used that because we've unwound our x-wing this square can't be a five eight must be in one of those two squares this lockout line is a one six just like its friend down here so this is a seven eight nine triple that's not a nine these squares are a one ah these squares are a one two three triple and we can place the one because again we're looking for numbers that aren't four and nine and aren't between four and nine so the only place one can go is here that means one is in one of those two cells i was about to say it can't go there but it absolutely can um, because in fact one is in a, in a way one of the most flexible digits nine here means that squares a four that means this squares an eight that resolves the eight and the seven in this box so these squares are five and six I can absolutely see why people have gone mad over this rule set. It really is. It Well, it's two things. It's very interesting, but it's also, it's fun. It's fun. That's why it's, I think that's why it's popular. Nine has to go there in box six. Look, so those two squares are a six, seven pair and we can do those. Wow. Um, and perhaps what I should think about doing, I'm not really sure, but I, I, I'm wondering about these squares now, because those squares have to be ones, twos, threes, and fours. Now those can't be twos, that one can't be a four. This one can't be a three or a four. Okay, that wasn't quite as good as I was hoping. Now, ones and fives here, so these are from six, seven, eight, nine. That one can't be six, eight, or nine, so that's seven, I think. This one can't be eight. This one can't be nine. These two squares are a two, three pair in the column five, look. Ah, okay, so now I've got Yes, in fact, which one of these is four, therefore? You can see it can only be this one. So that's that's a four, that's a four, that's a two. That's a two by Sudoku. These squares here have got to be threes, fives, and sixes. I haven't thought about this line yet. This line needs to have on it digits. Oh, well, this, this is fixed. It can't be a five or a six because it would be between four and eight. That's a three. So this square now has to be either one, two, three, or nine, but it can't be two or three. That's one or nine. Uh, I'm not sure if we can, not sure if we can do that, but 
That still seems quite useful, doesn't it? Now, what about that square in the corner up here? Which this square has to be a six, eight, or a nine. And it's not six, so that's eight or nine. Bother. <laughs> doesn't do anything. Um, this column needs three eights and nines. So this square is a three or a nine. This square is a three, eight, or nine. Um, now, I feel like we might actually have used up all of our all of our lines now, which is a bit worrying because we definitely haven't finished the puzzle. There must be a lot more Sudoku we can sort of wring out of this uh, if we're if we're diligent about what we're doing. So where maybe these two squares look, they've got to be three and five. Can we resolve those? Yeah. Oh no, it's not three and five. I've got a five in the column. What am I talking about? Three and seven. Oh, bother. <laughs> That's less good. Three and seven doesn't seem to get resolved. There's definitely a nine in one of those two squares. Bobbins. Right, so we've got to find something else. Um, I'm not exactly sure where to look, if I'm honest. We should have a look at... Where have we introduced some easy wins here? Anywhere? We Maybe the bottom row. Or maybe I've not labeled these lines correctly, which is very possible. One or three. There's, oh, okay. Look at this one, two, three triple. There's, the two in it has to be in one of those squares, so that's actually resolved. That's a three, that's a two, that's a one, that's a three. So that might be helpful. Ones are now nearly done. We've got one in one of those cells. Uh, we've also got to put a one in box nine. So ones are not actually that nearly done at all. Okay, what about, oh, this three has given me a seven here. That might be helpful. Seven and three go into the grid. These squares have now got to be one, six, and eight. That can't be a one. This three is placing a three in box uh, five. Still are ah, those two squares then. They, oh yeah, well, where does two go in row six? So we get a two, five pair there. These two squares are fives, sevens, and eights. This square, therefore, ah, that's just a seven or an eight. C's five. Ooh, vicious. Absolutely vicious. Where does seven go in column three? Not there, and not, it seems, in any other cell but that one. And that looks potent, because that's giving me eights in those squares, and a nine here. Which means this square here is not eight. These two squares are not eight. Now, has that broken the puzzle open at all? feel like it should have done something. Maybe in this column, we've got ones, sixes, and sevens to go. That square's a naked single. C six and seven in the row, so that's a one. This is a one. That's a six. That's an eight. That's a one. That square's a seven. This is a nine now, because of the one here. And that means this square is a six, and this is a five, and this is a five, and this is a six, and this is a five, and this is a seven. And we're off, off and running again. Now we need a nine in this column and a six. That fixes the eight over here. That fixes the nine and the six there. This square here now has got to be an eight. That's forced. That square is a three. This square is a five. And we need four and nine there, which we can do. Still haven't got this two three pair resolved, but hopefully we'll be we'll be good to do that in a minute. That's a seven, that's a four by Sudoku. This is a two five pair. Yeah, five, two, two, three, three, four, tick. Beautiful. What a lovely, lovely idea that puzzle is all based around. I think Tall Cat and Rift Clown deserve a lot of credit for working out because it's not 
intuitively obvious to me at least that when you come up with this rule set it's a suitable sort of building block for beautiful puzzles but that is undoubtedly a beautiful puzzle and the fact there are so many of these puzzles being created suggests that actually there is all sorts of logic that can be unlocked in them um, and lead to more experiences like this one this was really clever wasn't it so this arrangement up here forces 159 onto the endpoints which is weird in and of itself and that led to a nice x-wing on fives didn't it yeah and that was the really that was the killer because locking fives off endpoints forces four and six off the line <laughs> and that that did work in row five and made us able to make progress as we trickled down the grid it's clever stuff it really is i hope you enjoyed it let me know in the comments there's a lot more of these coming i think and we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.